Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about ways in which you can make the access to your NAS over the network that much easier. So for those that aren't aware, when you buy a new network attached storage device or NAS, if you want to be completely detailed about it, once you do get a NAS, you have to connect the device to your router from your ISP, internet service provider, or one that you buy, or connect it to a switch via a LAN cable. That is a normal RJ45 LAN cable. Would you, Adam and Eva? I don't have one here on camera. Two seconds. One of these bad boys, a LAN cable. And what happens with a LAN cable, it's an RJ45, is one end goes in the NAS, the other end goes inside a router or a switch, and therefore it gives you access to your internal network. And all the devices on your network, be they wireless or wired, that are on that same network, so in other words, all the devices that share the same internet, they will be able to access that NAS. Unfortunately, the number of times where your NAS is going to live can be quite troublesome because a lot of people, I mean, me personally, I have one NAS down here, I have another one on the table, and these I directly connect into. But all too often, people want a NAS in a location that isn't that accessible. Maybe it's in a roof, in a shed, in a garage, so basically somewhere where it's not obvious and it sits there in your home or office doing its job unseen. And this can lead to one major problem, namely, access because most NASes arrive like this one with a cable that's about a meter long, two meters long at most and therefore that it can really like lowers your coverage. Now there are ways in which you can access it. We can go from the most you know most basic cheap ones to the most commonly used. Probably the most obvious one for a lot of home users out there is quite simply a longer LAN cable. RJ45, Cat6, Cat7, that sort of thing once you get to about 20 meters, they start to lose their latency the tiniest bit. You can buy 20 meter cables pretty cheap for five to 10 quid. And these you can run and connect to an NAS and maybe run it in trunking in the walls. Or if you're living in student accommodation and you're, you know, you're paying rent, you can't really go ahead zzz, drilling holes in walls. Then you end up with land cables running along the edges and maybe across corridors just ready to trip someone up. But that's one way you can do it. And I do not recommend that. Of course, there are other ways. And some of the ways are which ones I'm going to talk about today. For me, the best, so rather than give you the best last, I'm going to tell you the best first, is power line adapters. Now, these bad boys are invaluable. Not just to people that don't want to start drilling holes through walls and running cable through it, but also to those that have a simple office or home network where all the elect um, electric devices in that home or office network are all controlled by one main switch. You know that thing when a light goes out in a room and the switch goes down and you have to go there, lift up the plastic, turn it on? Well, that means they're all on the same circuit. And that circuit can be utilized to access your NAS in remote locations of the home or office. Put simply, what are you doing? If I grab that cable that I threw away, one end of the cable will go into your NAS. The other end of the cable, rather than going into a switch or a router, can go into the power line adapter. This power line adapter, and I've got a UK one here, but of course, if you are in different countries, different regional plugs are available, and you plug that bad boy into your mains socket. Then, at the other end, when near the, where the router or the switch is, or the NAS, depending on how you want to do this, but with one end in the NAS and the other end, you go to wherever the router or switch is in your home, find the nearest plug point, plug in the other power line adapter, and in the other power line adapter, plug another cable. And this one runs into the switch. And the result is that with this plug connected to the NAS and this plug connected into the router or switch, it uses the mains wiring in your home to transmit the network signal and therefore give you the ability to store the NAS anywhere where there is a plug point or vice versa if you put the switch somewhere there's a plug point. Now there's no real limitation when it comes to power line adapters. You shouldn't really use more than about eight because they can get a little confused sometimes and they will pair up with a button there. The, the ones that you go for will change the price. You can get some that are 300 megabits per second and it goes all the way up to, I believe, 2,000 megabits theoretical per second. And the reason you'd go for those is if you've got multiple devices connected, because this one only has one port, but some of them you can get with three or four ports built in, and these will work um, you know, together in parallel to where the switch is via the mains current. And again, you can get some that are Wi-Fi, and these are definitely the best solution 
for your coverage and having greater access to your NAS over for bigger distances. But if the budget on that seems a bit tough, if you're in a home where you've got networks that are split, then another way you can do it is using one of these. This is uh, just a router. We've all heard of routers before. It's nice and simple, but this is slightly different. And you can use a normal router. So if you do have an old router knocking around from an old internet service provider, you can use that too. But I do recommend going for something like this anyway, uh, because it's got aerials built in. And what you have with this is the ability to either use one of these or use an existing uh, Wi-Fi router and use this to extend your coverage. So for example, you can connect this to your NAS or your existing router and run a cable and therefore enable wireless connectivity and therefore bridge the gap between your router and your NAS wirelessly. Now, I'm, you know, I'm gonna be completely upfront. This is less efficient than these. You will not get the same speeds with this method as you will with the plugs. But if you don't want to start running cables in, through or along your walls, this is definitely a good option. And once again, you can repurpose old switches and um, old routers or go out and buy an extender like this. Now, this is the N300 from Netgear. It is dirt cheap. I think it's about 20 pounds, 25 at a push, and it's got great coverage with those aerials, and it has a mobile app that you can monitor traffic. You can either set up its own internet connection, or you can just clone the existing internet connectivity and network settings that you have. So when it passes through into this to extend that coverage, the NAS will pick it up. The, one of the other ways in which you can extend your coverage, and NAS has really been dancing with this subject recently, is just to plug in a Wi-Fi router, uh, a Wi-Fi adapter. And what this is, is a simple USB adapter and loads. I'm talking hundreds, it's not thousands are compatible. This gives you the ability to connect an aerial to your Synology or QNAP NAS, and then boom, your NAS is wireless now. And if you've got a wireless router over here, a particularly good one, that's it. Like any other Wi-Fi device, your NAS can then be picked up by the, uh, by the router and vice versa. And therefore, you can access your internal network wirelessly on your NAS. Once again, even if you get a good Wi-Fi adapter, and I think they go up to 1.2 um, megabits per sec, uh, 1.2 gigabits per second, but more than likely you'll get a three or 500 megabits per second aerial, the coverage just isn't as good as standard LAN cables. So if you're using high and dense files, maybe 4K media, that sort of thing, this may not do the trick, but for lots of smaller files, this will definitely work. And as soon as your NAS is on the Wi-Fi network, the NAS will, will enter itself onto the same range as all of your phone, your tablet, your iPad, that sort of thing. And they'll all be there, your smart TV, and they can all communicate. Remember, this isn't about connecting device A with your NAS. It doesn't work that way. You've got to think of a network as a circle, and the devices have all got to be on it so they can communicate with each other and you can access the NAS. It's not about this device talking wirelessly to this. It's about them both being on the same network, the same railway, if you will, and being able to communicate. Those are pretty much the main ways in which you can access a NAS over greater distances. And once again, I can't stress this enough, power line adapters are the best way to do that. So I can't, can't recommend those enough. Of course, all of this is largely based on network access. If you're gonna be accessing over the internet, then that's slightly different because once again, internet connectivity will not be you over here in Spain, let's say Spain, why not, trying to access the NAS. It won't be you accessing the NAS, it will be you accessing your router and then the router being on the same network as that NAS have giving access to it. So it will still rely on how well the NAS lives on the network. What speed are you gonna be going low? Are you going to be going medium or are you going to be going fast? Those are the main ways to extend your coverage of your NAS on your home or business network. If you found this video helpful, please do click like, uh, just let me know so I can keep me going. Do subscribe to this channel if you'll learn more about the ways to make the most of your NAS server. And do remember to check out the link in the description to NASCompares.com where we talk more about this subject and ways in which you can extend, extend things more. And of course, a whole list of the very best Powerline adapters right now this year. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.